Hey, holiday shoppers, Santa isn't the only one getting letters. Look at all the letters Media Play's got. VHS. DVD. CDs. MP3. CDR. ACDC. Eminem. <laughs> ICP. Steve. PC. N64. PSX. Dot com. No matter how you spell it, Media Play's gift prices are A-OK. -okay. Media Play for gifts. Media Play. I've actually received multiple requests to talk about the downfall of Media Play, as for a few years it was a very popular big box chain that specialized in, well, media. Movies, small electronics, music, video games, books, things of that nature. They had a very wide selection, especially in the music department, but they didn't last particularly long. Why? Well, in Media Play's case, it was probably more that they were just a bit too specific. Media Play began as a concept store for a big box chain started by Musicland. Now, Musicland dates all the way back to 1955, and Musicland Group Incorporated owned several different chains you might be familiar with. Musicland, because, duh, Sam Goody, Discount Records, Suncoast Motion Picture Company, On Cue, and, well, Media Play. Media Play was their attempt to break into the big box format that was becoming very popular by the early 90s. The push of Media Play was a major initiative by them. They put a lot of money into this and they planned to open hundreds of different locations. They really were serious about it, but they only ever opened 89 total. However, they did attempt to supplement Media Play with their On Q brand stores. On Q was, well, seen as just kind of a smaller Media Play. They were more like outlets, not big boxes. Smaller, and they were meant for rural areas that may not have necessarily needed a very large store for media like a media play, but a smaller one could definitely survive. Because the thing about big boxes is that while they can be extremely profitable, as has been proven, they also have a lot of overhead. They're big, huge. Even if you own the property, and generally it's leased, there are also taxes to consider and things like that. Plus, larger buildings need more staff. All these things have to be considered before you go in and make a gigantic store. And that was kind of Media Play's biggest problem. Despite the fact that they were generally well-liked, people who went to Media Play really enjoyed it. There was a lot of different options. Their selection was phenomenal. I myself shopped at a Media Play and bought multiple CDs there. It was a great place to go if you were looking for specific media, especially more obscure stuff that wouldn't be carried at a place like Walmart. And they had a loyalty program called Their Replay, which allowed members to earn points for purchases that could earn gift certificates and things like that. That same program also worked at Sam Goody and Suncoast, so it seemed like they were doing everything right. People liked them, they offered a fantastic selection, they had a loyalty program, which was popular at the time. I mean, what happened here? Well, as I said, they were too specific. They were a very niche big box store. And niche and big box usually don't work well together. The big box format is good for a lot of things, but what it isn't good at is being too specific. Yes, there are specialty stores in the big box format like Best Buy or Circuit City. But remember when we talked about Circuit City and I said one of their mistakes was getting rid of their appliances? Yeah, see that limited Circuit City quite a bit to what they could sell. And limiting yourself in the big box format is an exceedingly risky thing to do. Because the less you have, the less you can sell. The whole point of a big box store is to have a wide array of different things. The reason why Walmart and Target do so well is that you can walk in there and generally find something along the lines of what you're looking for. Do you need clothes? They have it. Do you need food? They have it. Do you need electronics? They have it. Do you need toys? They have it. They have whatever you need. Yes, their selection isn't as varied as a specialty store, but for the general consumer, it's usually much better. The result of this in Media Play's case is that they only appealed to certain people. The kind of people that were, in effect, media junkies. The people that were looking for really niche stuff, really specific stuff, really obscure stuff, and that's great. But there aren't that many people in the grand scheme of things that are like that. Plus, as the 90s wore on, 
the internet became more common. And the nice thing about the internet is that you can find a lot of really obscure stuff for really good prices on a multitude of different websites, up to and including Amazon. Suddenly, there wasn't a reason to go to media play. The internet had everything you could possibly want when it came to your obscure media interests. And believe me, the rise in online music sales that helped kill off a lot of music stores certainly didn't help their case. They were in a very vulnerable position. And even smaller stores, like Suncoast, for example, started struggling, but in their case, they didn't have overhead that was nearly as high. And by 2001, Musicland as a whole was struggling. And they were bought by Best Buy. Best Buy bought Musicland for $696 million. The sale went through because, again, Musicland was struggling, but Best Buy was looking to diversify their retail holdings. They didn't just want to cover consumer electronics, they wanted to cover more media stuff. Now, Best Buy is on their own already did that, but not to the extent that a place like Media Play would. You could buy movies and stuff at Best Buy, but they didn't have as big of a selection. And since modern media is just a hop, skip, and a jump away from consumer electronics, most of the modern media is played on consumer electronics, this was reasonable, but it didn't go well. They tried to make some changes. They wanted to make Sam Goody more appealing to modern youth looking for newer, cool electronics, early 2000s stuff with transparent colored plastic. So futuristic, you guys. It's the new millennium. You remember that? Remember that fad? Not gonna lie, I kinda miss it. Even Apple did that. But what Best Buy didn't understand is that young people in the early 2000s weren't really looking for a lot of physical media. It was during those years that digital media was on a steep rise, starting with music and leading into so many other things like we have now. True, they could try to convert a lot of these locations into selling more hardware because whether or not you're purchasing digital media, you still need a device to play it on but the problem there was, now they were competing with themselves. Best Buy already sold the electronics. The whole point of the other stuff was the selection of media to play on the electronics. Their plan was basically to make Sam Goody into smaller Best Buys, which, okay, but you're not really helping yourself. You're eating your own market. They did re-merchandise the stores and converted all the on-cue concepts into just Sam Goody to reduce brand confusion. And they also dropped books for the most part, focusing on video games and DVDs and music. Modern media, not those dated books. Who reads anymore? You should read more. But none of these changes helped. Just the year after they bought Musicland, they suffered a net loss of $85 million. And upon realizing they had sunk a whole bunch of money into a thing that was only losing them more money, they wanted to get rid of it pretty much immediately. They put the whole company up for sale again, and they were about to liquidate when they actually did wind up selling it. Sun Capital Partners of Boca Raton, Florida purchased Musicland and all their brands from Best Buy, but not, um, not outright. I mean, they bought them, but it was a cash-free transaction. What does that even mean? Was it stock? No. In this instance, Best Buy basically gave them Musicland. They just wanted it gone. But the exchange here was that Sun Capital would take over all the debt and leases associated with Musicland. Effectively, Best Buy had wound up purchasing a giant anchor that was weighing them down, and they were begging for someone to just take it away. And Sun Capital offered to do that, so that's what happened. But Sun Capital had no luck in fixing their issues either. By 2005, they realized that Media Play, in particular, was doing nothing but dragging them down. People just weren't buying enough physical stuff to support a big box chain specializing in it. Other big boxes, like Walmart and Target, offered media selection, at least in terms of the most popular things. Meaning that Media Play could only support itself by offering more obscure stuff. Which they did, but even the obscure crowd was either downloading this stuff digitally, or just shopping for it online. In December of 2005, they announced the closure of all the remaining Media Play stores. And just the following month, January 2006, Musicland Group as a whole fired for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protections. During that process, they shut down 226 of the Sam Goody stores, 115 of the Suncoast Motion Picture Company stores, and every single Media Play. And that was pretty much the end of the story for Media Play. They only lasted 14 years or so. And it's a shame because, like I said, people really liked them. People still remember them, even though they weren't even around that long. 
but they were just too niche for the modern market, especially with the rise of digital media. It sucks, but that's how it went. As for the rest of the company, well, Musicland was acquired by Trans World Entertainment Corporation in February of 2006. They're now known as Caspian Holdings, and they still operate some of the stores, but not the media play ones, obviously. They began converting a lot of the mall-based Sam Goodies to FYE, which is their signature retail brand. Though they kept the Suncoast name on a few of those stores. The FYE and Suncoast brands are still plucking along in their own way. I wouldn't say they're doing tremendously, but they're still alive, so that shows they're at least trying. But the same can't be said for media play. They were cool stores. I liked them. But when it comes to retail, competition is steep. And the truth is, they showed up just in time for the internet to come along and rendered them kind of meaningless. I have some pretty fond memories of going there. That's how I discovered the band American Head Charge. By the way, um, why is most of American Head Charge's discography not available on streaming sites like Spotify? It's frustrating. I I'm sure there's a valid reason for it. The band has a, a complicated history. It's just frustrating. I just want to listen to Loyalty on Spotify, okay? Is that too much to ask? Maybe. Maybe it is. I don't know. I'm not judging. And with that, a special thank you. Go to all my underwater train finders, some dude 267 Benjamin Owens, Anzac A1, Arthur Roy, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Lord R444, Eisner for 1405, Charles Kwiatkowski, Matt Weaver, Tom Red Lion, NS Productions 8104, Will Jack 8401, Rescues Greyhounds, The Baxter, Kettle Crosswhite, Josh Johnson, Kid of Brainwaters, Prez Drenton, Master of None, Travis Delinsky, JBL Explorers, Tommy Rossini, Ben McCullough, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Mark Holding, Mr. Terrell, Hayden DeGrow, Bad Train Puns Are Best, Kurt Forkham, Harry, Drew Debris, George Kenny, Kevin Wood, Hendrick Motorsports Fan 5, Hannah Bird, Durauchi, A Person 723, William Nemo, Dr. Racer 78, Shimasu, Metal for Life Guy, Andrew Bowen, Crimson Rose, Ryan Weehofer, Syntax M, Boss K, Orange Glass, Andy, The Conceptualist, Ohio Trucker 1, Windy City Rails, John Videola, AET Museum, Extra Special J, Kieran Tibbetts, DFL Church, Murder Drones Doll, Bob Condurk, Your Mom Liked It, Jared Brussel, Caden Alvey, Levi Anderson, Dara Williams, Liam Wright, DE Ultra, Mr. Sleepy, NJ1969, Acoletti, Jonathan Coco, and of course, my dad. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fine farewell.